Let's check out the Fuso starting grid and from the pole position it'll be Craig Lowndes. What a great job in qualifying. A margin of nearly two tenths of a second from David Reynolds. It's red versus green on the front row of the grid. It's a hungry bunch of Fords in behind with Will Davison and his teammate Mark Winterbottom. Jason Bright, the next of the Holdens. He's alongside our reigning champion with the number one, Jamie Whitcup. Michael Patrizzi, we just caught up with him on the grid with Mark Larkham. He'll be alongside Shane Van Gisbergen. New three-year deal for him at SP Tools and Stone Brothers. Coulthard and Webb. Next in the queue from Todd Kelly, Jack Daniels Racing and Lee Holdsworth had a good run yesterday. So mid-pack looks like this, Garth Tander and Stephen Johnson, two tireless campaigners, 13th and 14th. Tim Slade finished on the podium yesterday. He'll have to do it from 15th with Rick Kelly alongside him. VIP Pet Foods entry of Steve Owen. And Michael Caruso has shown a lot of pace but just hasn't got the results out of it. Taz Douglas and Greg Murphy had an off this morning, Murph in the fifth practice session of the weekend. David Wall and Carl Reindler. So James Courtney and Russell Ingle will be starting from pit lane. They're playing a different strategy game to the rest. James Moffat, Tony D'Alberto, Team Highflex in the rear of the grid. Dean Fiore and Alex Prema. So they spent a long, long night here at Fujitsu Motorsport to piece that car back together. The big damage to the rear after contact yesterday. You asked that question about strategy, Matt. Uh, what I also needed to say at that time, we didn't have enough time to answer it properly, but it depends who you are. If you're down in the second half of the field and you've had a bad qualifying, well, you can be a little more flexible in your approach to the race. You can play a different game to everybody else. However, if you're a championship contender, you're up near the front of the grid, certainly the first third of the field, it's much harder to take the riskier approach because you could clearly fall further. That's right. So uh, Courtney and Ingle were uh, 23rd and 24th, so you can play that card. Yeah, so that was the more, you know, the rounded answer for that particular point. Access all areas today down at the garage of Team BOC as Tony D'Alberto comes into pit lane. So make it three starters out of the lane. Brad Jones, okay, the team principal down there at Team the BOC. Hello, guys, Bradley. Hey, Matty. How are you going up there? We're, well, look, we're very good, but we want to know what you're going to get up to. You've got both of your cars starting inside the top ten. We're talking strategy, strategy, strategy. What are you thinking? Well, it's going to be a tough race. Everyone's playing their cards pretty close to their chest from what I was listening to you guys talking to them and Larko working out there. For us, we've got one each way, and uh, we're going to run the BOC car on a one-stop strategy, so he's going to be out there trying to save as much fuel as possible. And Fabian, we're going to release right from the start of the race, and he's going to press on as hard as he can. Depending on what's going on with traffic will depend when we bring him in, somewhere between 10 and 15. And I think that's probably a more aggressive strategy on a day like today, and I really believe that'll reap some rewards. So it's taking a bit of talking to get some of the boys to get their head around it, but we're pretty keen to try that and see how it goes. Just quickly, Brad before we go to the start. Uh, you had a couple of power steering issues with two of your three cars. Fixed yet? I hope so. There's got a little bit of shaking in it, but the, the, um, the other problems are gone away. So, fingers crossed, we'll see what happens. Geez, those drivers complain, don't they, Brad? Don't they. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Good luck. See ya. We're going to check in with Brad Jones throughout the course of the afternoon. Access all areas inside Bradley Jones Racing. So, here we go. Three cars in pit lane. So, 25 out there on the grid at the front. It's no, Lowndes starting from pole position for the fifth time in his career at this circuit. Another race win here. Green flag, green flag. We put him equal with you, Scafie, on the all-time list, but there's a long way to go before this one. One of the most spectacular sights in Australian oh, motorsport. Oh, it's all! Lowndes is almost gone! He's had to use the auto start to get it going, Lowndes. It actually stopped, I reckon, so Lowndes has gone straight back in the field. Look at Reynolds. Reynolds has brained them into the first turn. FPR, one, two, three. Lounds right back. He'll be battling to be 10th. That's Jason Bright, hung out wide, but he gets back on. All the work from qualifying, the margin that he held, the great job that he did, gone at the drop of the clutch for Craig Lounds. And in the weeds also, Mark Winterbottom through two. Fabian Coulthard in a dangerous position here. Up to turn four. So Reynolds leads Davison, leads Winterbottom. Win Cup in there. And Louds drops back as there's contact between Greg Murphy, Stephen Johnson and Michael Caruso, the innocent victim. Side to side contact at the hairpin. Pretty healthy because it picked the Falcon right up and dropped it back on the road. shot through 
a turn eight on cold tyres. And this is very serious. Down the outside goes Tender. Wow, that was an, a very, very late break manoeuvre. He'll be battling to get out of here. That's wet down there at MG. And that gamble has cost him dearly. So look at that, his teammate who started in pit lane rounds him up and so too does Ingle. So first lap around, David Reynolds, just like he did yesterday. But it was added benefit because Loud stalled. Now Will Davison takes a big dive down at turn one. I think there could be some difference there in strategy because Davison come from a long way back to pass Reynolds. So Reynolds might be in fuel consumption mode. We already heard from Mark Dutton to Jamie Winker. Press on, brother, press on. So he won't be in fuel mode at all. Trizzy's come up to fifth place, by the way. Car number 91. There he is, the white car, lurking right at the back of the key pack here. Winterbottom goes by, Reynolds also, Winkup trying to do the same, that's Patrizzi in behind. So Winkup we know is sprinting. On board now with Jamie, right behind Dave Reynolds. Have a listen here. And here they're on cold tyres, little lift, just to balance the car and then slide the car into this Lukey Heist. Left hand section and down into MG. I thought he was going to get down the inside of Dave then. And Lowndes is showing speed. But look at this. Watch the start. And it's stopped. Cold. He's used the auto start and launches it again. It's something that we uh, will cover off at some stage. Look at that. All, all your work gone. That was lucky. They were very lucky to get around him then. Definitely contact there between the teammates, and that's Garth Tanner down the outside of Rick Kelly and Lee Holdsworth, and speared straight off. It's a bit of a weird manoeuvre there from Garth. You don't normally see that style of thing from him. Very experienced, very good operator, and is now 26th as a result. Behind his teammate, as Matt said, who started from pit lane. Oh, uh -huh. Trizzy off the road after this great start. He was holding fifth. That's down there at turn two, the southern loop. That'll cost him a bunch of time. Oh, big lockup. It's his own lockup. And you trail the brake into turn two there a long way. It's one of the best braking areas in Australian motorsport. It just caught Michael out there. He locked the left hand front, doesn't steer. Lounge gets past Todd Kelly, so that's back up to seventh now. He tries to pick his way back up through this field. Davison, the race leader, by 1.3 seconds over Mark Winterbottom. Davey Reynolds, we think, in conservative mode at the start. Jamie Winkup is pushing really hard. Shane Van Gisbergen, fifth. Fabian Coulthard, now sixth. And then it's Lowndes, Todd Kelly, John O. Webb and Tim Slade. I spoke to Dave Reynolds before. You'll be able to see his technique here versus Jamie Winkup. Winkup in the Triple Eight car, they do a very good job on the way to the corner. We're going to stay on board for a lap. And you'll be able to see the difference in the way these cars achieve their speed. The FPR Falcon in front.
the FPR car once it gets to the middle of the corner, like, like now. We just see it start to sneak away. It's a very good lateral grip mid-corner. Great driving, mate. Keep pushing, use up those tyres. Jamie's encouraged there to keep pushing and use those tyres. So he's on that mode that we said, Mark Larkham, sort of about 12 to 15 laps. So you make it into three lots of 15 laps and sprint. Use the tyres up in each segment of the race. Watch Dave Reynolds there. I spoke to him earlier about trying to make the exits a little straighter, and he's done a very good job there. In the race yesterday, I was critical of him exiting the corner too wide, which hurts the last-minute speed and the way the car comes off the corner. Also hurts the tyre. Whoops. Delberto off and out, it seems. And that might be safety car. Could be. It's very wet on the grass here at the moment. Try your limit see if that gets you some traction. This will have very big ramifications if it does trigger the safety car because it'll change this whole economy car question. Flags, there we go. Car definitely guys will pit. They will definitely try to make some ground in terms of fuel economy by using this safety car to their advantage. <laughs> Just, and watch guys will be actually looking for who's coming in some teams with a narrow pit lane will have to stack because if Davison comes in Mark Winterbottom is right behind does Winterbottom come in yes he does yes, they all do so good luck with this and you're right too they're all looking this will uh, release David Reynolds a little if he's been in the uh, conservation mode now yeah riching it all up boys all getting into another coming into the pit lane their normal deal Davison race leaders in Winterbottom Reynolds Wind Cup Van yeah. Gisbergen and Lowndes yeah. Cooptone yeah. but he's holding them up mate because he's and trying to give himself room so he doesn't have to stack for as long and uh, Brad Jones who's with us today he's left his bloke out so Jason Bright staying out and going to the top of the field Will Davison being released. Oh, look at this. Slade's had to stop. That's a kid. That's going to hugely affect a bunch of cars. He's going to make contact. He's going to make contact. What a mess. Yes, definite contact. Oh. Have a look at this. What a mess. David called. Sorry, Fabian called that. He's fired straight over the back of Reinler. That car stood right up on two wheels against the guardrail. Yes, thank you, Sandy. I just uh, hold it 60. Hold it up at 60. I thought it was David Wall, yeah. but it was Carl Reinler. That was chaos. Now, Jason Bright hasn't stopped. Neither is Lee Holdsworth or Alex Premer. David Wall, Garth Tander, Michael Caruso. Six drivers took the opportunity to stay out. Slowing down and then down to 29 k's in pit lane as well. So it screwed over most of pit lane. I marked some cars and tyres, but not a lot. Um, 
it's a bit hard to say, but um, at least three or four. A lot of the first cars he did tires. Uh, after that, I, it, it all got pretty handy. Look at that. I had nothing to all the back going. I couldn't hear him, Right, uh, obviously not a pretty too, but just um, keep that in mind. I just went out there and then stopped the track in line. We're in play, there's six guys that have not fitted in front of us. We can only see 18. So, I'll see they want to fit again. So, um, yeah, around 12-ish. But, uh, yeah, great pace. Got a better time than like everyone else. Still 38 months to go. So a bit of uh, silly business to start this Sunday afternoon <laughs> in pit lane. Most of the crazy stuff went on on the circuit yesterday, but already now in pit lane with contact, Carl Reinler's car. And one of the big losers out of that was Mark Winterbottom, who's dropped a whole stack of spots. Something hanging out of the bottom of the BOC car there. You can just see maybe a, um, a front stabiliser bar adjuster or something. It's just hanging yeah. down. Just behind the left hand rear or left hand front wheel. Bradley's on the line. Uh, BJ, you'd be looking at the same pictures. Uh, any clues as to what we're spotting down there? Uh, uh, none, actually. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Good for your, you know, thanks for that. Thanks yeah. for your technical input, genius. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, clearly, I'm a driver, not an engineer, but uh, it certainly looks like something's hanging down there, if that's any help to <laughs> you. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Well done. <laughs> Australia thanks you, Bradley. Yeah, I've got now, my finger right on the pulse. You chose to leave Jason out, so clearly different strategy play to everybody, well, not everybody else, but the vast majority of the field. So one assumes from here you're going to try and do the one stop trick. Absolutely, and uh, I just felt, you know, bringing them both in to try and top them up, Brighty was going to get somewhat disadvantaged. Um, as it turns out, it was um, it was Fabian in the Lockwood car. I mean, you know, that, I don't understand why they can't pull over tight. Obviously, there's going to be cars coming along behind them. To be hanging halfway out in the lane is just ridiculous, and it... Yeah, anyway. It's a very good point, Brad. We totally agree. The other thing that's going to happen with Jason, based on a one-stopper, is this safety car is, is going to help him a lot. Yeah, it is. It's going to get, get him right in the window. So now what he needs to do, of course, he's going to be, um, he's going to be down a little bit on pace because you know, we work it out, degradation is about 0 0.07 a lap and he's five laps down on the cars behind him. So they're going to come at him pretty hard, but we feel our car is pretty kind to its tyres. He's got a good track position now, which is one of the parts of the decision that we decided to take. We knew he'd be right up the front. And so, so we were thinking, you know, we'd have one, four or five back from him and then have him and it would work out nicely. So look, this is still a good, good option for Bradley, us. Bradley, just have a look at the monitor there and you'll see the queuing that we were just discussing and we'll see Fabian getting all tripped up in all this. So after you've seen the pictures again, just invite your comments. Oh, we go, a little two yeah, wheel action, Bradley. You know what, it just, I mean, you, you need in, in this place to be right over close to the, uh, to the car that you, you're parking next to, you can't swing out and then swing in again. It's just, it's too narrow to do that. So very, very disappointing. Thanks, mate. You're leading the race. We'll let you get back to it. We'll check back in a little bit later on. Brad Thanks, Jones guys. on the line at Team BOC. Jason Bright, his driver, is leading at the moment and actually got a very good jump at the restart there. So he's taking a bit of pressure off himself immediately from Lee Holdsworth. Premier is in third position. He was out of business early yesterday. Moving already through the pack is Will Davison. He's the first in the queue who stopped. And remember, he got the clean entry. Pretty much everybody after that was up to their armpits in crocodiles. So Winterbottom was really affected, and so were Lowndes as the two cars behind their teammates having to stack. A tander from nowhere, because remember, we saw him make the mistake down at turn 10, is now in fifth position and their fuel economy is very good. So he'll be one of the guys now to look for in this fuel economy battle. So at the restart, Will Davison gets past Michael Caruso. David Reynolds just did it as well. Jamie Wincup has done it. They're all looking for that track position. That was a pretty good job, Shane Van Gisbergen, because he hung wide, stayed on with it and rounded up Michael Caruso, who was kind to him on the exit, and they all got it done, no pain exchanged, and continued their battle. So Bright's at the front. Remember, he didn't stop. There's Lee Holdsworth. He didn't stop either. And Alex Premer, third. David Walls, fourth. Then Garth Tander. And then the first in the queue of those to stop, Will Davison. 
Now, what you've got to do in fuel conservation mode is not get involved in the race. So if guys get you and attack you based on their speed, you've just got to let them by. You've got to be very patient in this phase of the race to get you to the next stop, which is around 22 and 23, as Mark Larkin pointed out at the start of the race. So you print, oh, someone's in the wars here. Rindler, isn't it? Yes, it is Rindler, and it's one of the Techno Autosports cars down there as well. It's plucked the front off Carl's car. And Michael Patrizzi. This could be safety car again, because that's parked there. It's pretty wet. You can see there, no traction at all. What they do car often... Boards and flags, safety car, car boards and flags, safety car boards and flags, car off, outside turn one. Safety... Cruise is an absolute idiot. So, Rick Kelly, I, I heard Tony Dow from Jack Daniels Racing on the radio talking to him as well, so they've clearly got quite an issue with the JD car. There's a bit of feeling out there at the moment, as you can imagine. It's been a wild weekend for lots of people. So there's the front bumper bar and splitter off Carl Reinler's car. And does this tell more of the story? That's fast, isn't it? Very high speed departure off the outside of turn one. The gravel's done a bit of its job there to arrest some of the speed. Here is again from the other angle, from the other side. Uh, grass out there at the moment is very, very wet. And they're stuck out there to stay until they can be recovered by the crews. We'll give the crews a shout out again this weekend. Volunteer marshals. Oh, look at that. He served him just from behind. Oh. That could have been a very, very nasty accident. So, Michael Patrizzi, Carl Reinler need a rescue mission down there at turn one. The safety car in control again. Came down to turn one, drove past him, and he's moved across to the right, big time, on the white line. Someone that's on the grass had a cut and nothing about it. settling in period in this race because we haven't even got that far yet it's been safety car city so let's have another crack at it have a look at the restart <laughs> that is seriously lee holdsworth has been asleep there he's been five miles behind bright that's a great restart from bright but look at the gaps and that's two in a row for jason bright so he's on fire when it comes to reading those at the moment He's always been quite cagey on the restart. He's done a very good job. He's snuck away. And there's also a big gap there between Prema and David Wall. David Wall copying some pressure there from Garth Tander. And the guys now behind Tander, Davison, Reynolds, Winkup, Van Gisbergen, they'll be sprinting. 
Oh, big dive there from Garth. Does he get it done? Oh, not quite. That's Reinley heading back to the garage, minus the front end off that car. So they'll uh, have to attend to that, try and get it repaired and get it back out to get some points at least. And we saw these boys playing for keeps yesterday. This group of guys. And that's Wink up up the long side. Dave Reynolds, a little bumping duel. This won't be nice at the fast right. Oh. It's very dirty offline there at the moment. Jamie lost a bit of ground in that manoeuvre. Actually allowed Shane to get closer, so that'll be the incentive that Van Gisbergen looks for over the top of the hill. He'll try and dart to the right. Jamie covered him. Actually, Jamie's going to try and put the move on Reynolds here, and he's just about got this done. He has. That surprised me. Did that with relative ease. He did, and there's a little slight nudge there from Van Gisbergen. This could be bad. Ooh, gee, that missed by nothing. And the problem is when you're in Reynolds' position there, you're doing it all by feel. You know he's there, but you can't see him. Your peripheral vision and your mirrors restrict your vision to the extent that you just think, I'll turn in, I hope there isn't contact. It's that awkward feeling when you come into that last corner of Phillip Island. That's exactly right. There is no way of knowing. The only way you know is the little bump. And Shane did a nice job then of actually releasing the throttle and not making contact. He made a little bit of contact out of 11, but at 12 he did a very nice job. And earlier, uh, team principal from Team Vodafone, Roland Dane, was for, oh, look at this down the inside for Davison on Tanda, and that's done. That was almost three abreast because Winkup was down the outside of Tanda. And we saw the dramas between Jamie Winkup and Will Davison yesterday in that exact position. Guys, Roland Dane from Team Vodafone has been talking to officials. He's not happy. He thinks Mark Winterbottom has been slowing down on the circuit and in pit lane to ease his boys up. And the other one, Barretta. Rick Kelly's in the garage. It looks like they've had a hose blown off, a water hose blown off their radiator. And uh, a funny one, uh, Caruso was in here just a moment again. He's had contact. He's bent his steering arm. Now, when they usually bend those, they pull them out and replace them. But the boys dived under there with a two-pound hammer and were banging it back straight. And I guess if that works, it works. But what they didn't do when the guy was under the car banging, they didn't put the compressible, incompressible jack in there to stop the car potentially coming down on him. So the stewards are reviewing that as we speak. Well, that'll be a penalty. So if there's un someone under the car and working on the car without that little stubby in there, as they call them, then uh, they'll, they'll cop a penalty for that, unfortunately. The, the funny part of that, I know the dangerous part is being under the car without those jack stands, but the funny part was Michael Caruso saying, it won't turn left. And boys, there's a lot of left-handers at this track. <laughs> well, there's eight uh, of them. Eight, eight of them. <laughs> Twelve corners and eight of them turned left, so it was a very good assessment. And with every whack of the hammer, he got another millimetre of either toe in or toe out so a bit of how many taps he gave it as to what the geometry was at the end of it <laughs> exactly he'll find out soon enough whether it's in or out oh, wind cup thinking about it absolutely maxed out under brakes you can see the body language from both cars both boys there's no more braking performance no more tire adhesion left in the battle and remember that wind cup will be wise look at this Sideways. he's up this side he doesn't want to be on the outside today so he might return the serve here let's see what happens he does Remember yesterday, it was the other way round, and he took a tour of the grass wind cup. Oh. That is very lively. I've said it all weekend, one of the fastest corners in Australian motorsport, and they turned in there together. And wind cup has got speed on Tanner, and down the inside he goes. Good move. Still not done, because the next corner goes left. And what Jamie's doing at the moment is going to be very, very careful. He's leaving that gap exposed to Van Gisbergen. So if he gets too high and wide somewhere, he'll find a blue falcon tucked underneath him. That little gap as they turned in, you could just see that the front aero is affected on the front of the Vodafone car when you're so close to the car in front. You can see now the slipstream effect that Mark Larkham said. That was about a car length and a half of gain up to 290 kilometers an hour and then through the fast right this is great vision from the coats hire chopper what a gaggle of cars neil now bright is making two seconds a lap on this group of cars he's in the high mid to high 34s these guys are all in the mid to high 36s so this is really affecting what the long game looks like for this group of cars and we've also heard from race control that they will investigate the compliant oh, Little mistake when it mattered most. Look at Jamie trying to get power to the road. They also run side by side. 
down to Siberia again. This is what happened yesterday. Tander escorted him off the right on the exit. Wink Cup now gets out of there together now. This is the opposite to the last lap because the red guy on the right's got the line and he takes it from him. Very, very good quality racing. Great driving. Race control advising that the incident of uh, Winterbottom holding the field up in pit lane will be reviewed afterwards. Here comes Van Gisbergen also looking on Tander. Lounge, trailer park girls around the outside. Of, oh, he's almost gone three wide. He has his up the inside. He got two positions there. He went round the outside oh, it's of more Todd contact. Kelly. David Reynolds has copped a whack from Craig Lowndes. He's dropped a couple of spots there. Yeah, Todd Kelly also made sure that he uh, finished him off in the turn 11 12 sequence there. Reynolds has got no speed today. Whatever they've done to the car, it hasn't tuned it up at all. And there's Winterbottom trying to grab him as well. So they're now 11th and 12th Reynolds and Winterbottom. And Winterbottom, if you don't know, was hurt badly because they had to bring both cars in in that first safety car intervention. And then he backed everybody up. Here's the gaps. Check them out. Jason Bright leader. Just under two seconds margin to Lee Holdsworth. Then Will Davison, the first in the queue who stopped. Look at this bunch. That is an angry group of cars. <laughs> Well, and this is where Jason Bright is making up all that time because these guys are scrapping and scrapping and scrapping, using up all their energy, using up tenths of a second here and there as this contact battle unfolded between Kelly and Reynolds, then Lowndes and Reynolds, then Lowndes and Reynolds again, and then Kelly and Reynolds almost. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded like a story, Matt. <laughs> Well, the end game was that David Reynolds was a punching bag for yeah, that was a couple hundred metres. <laughs> but Lowndes did a great job to get round the outside of both guys, and now he's down the inside of Tander. At the spot we saw on the previous lap. Now he's going to try to do the crisscross here, around turn 11, and then back up the inside with a run down to turn 12. Now they've settled into a good rhythm. Safety car's out of the way for a while. Jason Bright has the lead at this race by two seconds over Lee Holdsworth here at Phillip Island.
29 laps to go in this Sunday afternoon race here to close out the Phillip Island 300. Yesterday's race taken out by Mark Winterbottom. Today it's Jason Bright who leads the way from Team BOC after starting fifth. Just quickly, pit lane drive through penalty, Michael Caruso. We expected that as a result of the stubbies, those little jack stands not being used in that stop that Mark Larkham described. And quick update before we go back down to the pit lane. And um, we heard that Garth Tander saying the car's shocking compared to yesterday. It's worse. He can't do anything with it. I thought it might have been running on an economic basis because remember, he still hasn't stopped. And he was still trying to get through on this one stop basis. But the margin that Jason Bright's got is outstanding, 3.9 seconds. Will Davison's got past Lee Holdsworth. So Bright now leads Will by, like you say, four seconds pretty much. Craig Lowndes is on full attack mode. He's back up to sixth. So the order's Bright, Davison, Holdsworth, Wind Cup, Shane Van Gisbergen, Lowndes, Alex Premer, whose car's a real handful by the look of it. David Wall, Gartander and Todd Kelly. So let's check in down at uh, Team BOC again. Brad Jones has been uh, keeping us up to date. What are you going to do, Bradley, with uh, with Jason Bright? A couple of safety car laps. How far are you going to take it out before you bring him in? Um, we're happy to get him to about 23. Looks like he's got enough fuel. We're running the thing pretty rich and um, he's smoking along really nicely in the car. It's um, pretty comfortable for him. He hasn't complained. I've um, looked at a bit of the vision you gave me earlier, fellas, and um, I reckon that's probably a front anti-roll bar sensor that's hanging down, because I haven't spoken to the engineers to find any of that info no, out. No. And it only took you, what, half an hour? <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it wasn't that hard. I just had to ask Andrew Edwards, so worked out. I said, well, what's that hanging down the front of the car? That's the anti-roll bar sensor you can see here on the screen. Right, thanks. Got that. <laughs> I'll well pass done. it on. Well yeah, done, Brad. Yeah, I know. I'm a bungle of information. <laughs> but let me, let me tell you a little bit about what goes on here. This is a really important part of the race. Well, it looks like there's a guy, guys packed in behind me here just watching what's going on. There's so much stuff to, to keep your finger on. And with Jason running the front of the field, it's a really good opportunity to come and have a look and see how we work out what we're doing with fuel strategy. So, Dave, if you want to come forward a little bit, you can see over here with these screens that I'm pointing at, we've got... We've got um, how much fuel the, the car actually uses, so we can tell exactly what's, what the, the car is using. Paul Scalzo over here is working out how much fuel we need to get to the end. And this is obviously with Fabian's car, I don't want to, the Lockwood car, I don't want to interfere what's going on over with BOC. Phil Keat here is um, the main engineer on the, the Lockwood car and what he's doing is he'll be watching the lap times because sometimes what we do is we set them a target, which is sort of what we've done with Brighty to a certain extent, and we want them to hit that mark every time. So they've got the ability inside the car to see what time they're doing, and we've got the ability here to see every part of the lap and see the gain or loss through the data that we're getting fed. We also look at track map so we can see exactly where the car is. Our cars come up with little squares over the top of them. You can see on that top screen up there. So we, we've got a really good indicator here of everything that's going on. So we don't actually need to be standing in pit lane to see who's who in the zoo. We can tell it all from here. So what we can tell from looking at some of these data is Brighty is really, really going well. He's as fast as anyone in the race at the moment. I'm a little worried about the next four or five cars, lounge, you know, certainly Will Davison's coming at him a bit. But by the time we get to lap 23, hopefully there'll be no safety cars. We'll be able to top that thing up with fuel and run to the end. And I'm pretty pretty certain on a one-on-one -on -one fight, Bright, he's in it for, uh, for the win. He's a bit hungry and he hasn't had one for a while, so hopefully we can do it today. Hey, Brad, we only asked you about what was hanging from the front. We didn't ask you to take over the telecast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that was the anti-roll bar I just said. Uh... <laughs> Thanks very much. Well done. Well done, mate. Uh, thank you for showing us that because that's exactly what the game is that's unfolding in front of our eyes. 3.3 <laughs> seconds. Give the bloke a little opportunity. <laughs> so 3.3 is the difference between Brighty and Will Davison. Holtzworth is third. It's David Wall tucked in behind. No, sorry, Carl Reinler. He's got that front end fixed up a little bit. So we've had four laps of safety car two separate incidents one for Dalberto off remember the other one for the Patrizzi Reindler incident that has the effect of pushing along elongating this first stint for those that didn't stop including Jason Bright our race leader at the moment so if they want to down at Brad Jones Racing in the Team BOC side of the gar I noticed Bradley took us to the Lockwood side of the garage to make sure we didn't see any of the Jason real data, Bright data. <laughs> And uh, we'll see whether or not they run him empty. 
Yeah, boys, I've been standing down here for about 17 minutes waiting to get in with an update from 15 laps ago. I thought Brad Jones got on there. <laughs> um, you said about Davey Reynolds' pace, Neil. It's a good good observation, mate. He, he, he is struggling. I spoke to James Small, his engineer. Oh, seriously, Brad Jones, fair thing. Uh, and uh, look, they're, they're, they're genuinely miffed, mate. He's not on an economy run. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing obviously showing up down here at this end. They're, they're genuinely a little miffed where the pace has gone and why the car is going around at the pace that it is. Yeah, it was pretty obvious when you look at the behaviour of the car with those overhead shots from the chopper before were very descriptive because he's getting battered from pillar to post. It's just it's got no mid-corner yeah. speed and that means he's getting his ears boxed. That shot that we had a few minutes back, or well, before the Brad Jones hour started, we saw that he was getting slapped on the left and slapped on the right. This is David Reynolds. Oh, that was a big moment, Lowndes. Out of turn two, the cars come out of there at about 180 kilometres an hour and they oh, slide from third way. to fourth gear. And Lowndes just had a big correction off the kerb down the inside of Holdsworth and Van Gisbergen. And Lee looks to be having a bit of a struggle here at the moment on the, these tyres as well. Remember, he hasn't stopped, so those tyres have, have, have now seen better days. Lowndes' progress is the one, Neil. Watch this. Look at this slide. That rooster is tail. out of control. So, oh, that's so no, close to going in the, in the paddock on the left-hand side. No shock, the right foot didn't come up. No. Just the rooster tail continued then. Jeremy Moore, his engineer. So uh, the point I wanted to make there, the reason why those two cars from the Stone Brothers garage have got a little disparity in speed at the moment is that Van Gisbergen has stopped. He came in on lap five and he's got tyres and uh, clearly Lee Holdsworth didn't, so that's what the difference of five laps worth of tyre grip does in your lap speed. So Lee's hurting a little at the moment in the Irwin car. So Lowndes and Winker on the same strategy. Lowndes was affected by having to stack in the pit stop, but he's made real ground on Jamie Winker. He's only one second away from Winker, so Lowndes has actually got better speed than Winker. Let's go back a little further in the pack to find Greg Murphy, the Pepsi Max crew in 13th spot. He's coming forward, he's going, doing a good job. Behind him is Tim Slade, in front of him is Alex Premier, who's got the left blinker on, so he gets it right eight times around the lap. Yeah, I reckon what you're going to see play out, we're in the sort of that window, that lap 22 we spoke about, but because they got that safety car, I reckon you might, there's not a lot of action down here. I reckon teams will just go another couple of laps here yeah. to give themselves a nice fuel option to go flat out from here to the end, rather than make it marginal. Lee Holdsworth is going to come in this lap. Remember, Jason Bright has never won at Phillip Island, the V8 Supercar race. So this is a very big moment for Brad Jones Racing and Jason Bright. He's driven very, very well. He's got a 2.8 second lead over Will Davison from Jamie Winkup, Lowndes, Van Gisberg and Lee Holdsworth, Todd Kelly, Garth Tander, Mark Winterbottom and Jonathan Webb. So you get a little bit of... Uh additional range when you have that safety car intervention as Mark said that might extend it by a lap or two remember they want to get to the critical lap that Mark Larkham shows us on the whiteboard so that they can fill and get home now some people have they've got no choice they're getting right at the bottom of the tank at the moment those that came in and grabbed a bit of fuel and tires what will happen to them when they come in about lap 28 or thereabouts you'll see that they've got slightly better tyre condition at the end of their stint. So this is going to get very interesting at the back end of the race because there's an offset of about five laps across enough people that it's going to merge at the back end of the race. 100%. And the thing that happens here, and we've got to reiterate this as Alex Premer comes into the pits, is that we saw an unbelievable finish at Barbagallo Raceway at the last round with tyre degradation and difference in speed. This is what will play out at the end of this race because the tyre degradation is worse than any other racetrack in Australia. They're the fastest corners, low grip, the cars slide, so the time that they put fuel in is not necessarily the end game. So look at that, Brand Spankers for Lee Holdsworth. Oh, stopped. He turned itself off. Yeah, right, mate. To go again now. Fuel's not in. Go, 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 go. Take your bars, please, take your bars. It was a little moment. That was just the idle setting. The idle setting was a little bit low, so it turned itself off when he came to a halt. Get ready to go. This is Alex Premer. Gary Rogers Motorsport team is filling this one up with fuel. Just watch the exit. I'm surprised that Richard Holloway isn't going to turn that blinker off by now. It's been on for a while, hasn't it? So, uh, on our estimates, four laps of safety car intervention on the basic known values that we work with will give you about another two laps of range at racing speed. So Bright, I know he's in. I was going to say if he wanted to, he might go oh! oh! 
He might be able to go another lap. He's Jeez. had a few bites of that to get it down to 40 k's. Actually, he want to be real careful. He want to be real careful. We've all been pinged on that one. Well, and the, and he's got nowhere to hide because there's no one masking him. This will be interesting, folks, because that the radar man stands at the end of pit lane and he watches and he gets a reading straight away. It was by himself. There was no other confusion. So let's hope that Jason Bright got that car stopped back to 40 k. Left, left rear was pretty sticky then. And look at all the cars coming in. They're waiting for fuel. You're going to have to merge. You're going to have to merge. Go, 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 go. Merge behind 55. Just behind Reynolds. And he gets through. Well done. Good job. Good communication then. He told him he had to merge, and then he told him which car he had to merge behind. So the left rear wouldn't go on properly, but it didn't matter because the fuel hadn't gone in yet anyway, so oh, yeah. really no dramas out of that winter bottle. It was Chris Clark on the radio, Chris Clark talking to Jason Bright, giving the advice to merge behind David Reynolds. This is fuel to the end. Nice big outlap go. With Frosty is the instruction. Now, meantime, Will Davison's gone to the lead of the race. He was originally the first of those that had stopped. His fuel range allows him to go another few laps if he chooses to, but he could come in any time he likes with a clear lane now, fill up and get home. So it'll be curious. If he's got pace, it might be nicer to just leave him out at the moment, get right near the end of this fuel. Here's the replay of the bright arrival and have a look at the thing locked up trying to Drop the speed, look at the brake dust from inside those front wheels, getting it down to 40 k's, back to first gear, and then engaging the pit lane speed limiter, and hoping that the man on the radar was looking... Oh, oh Gisbergen, Gisbergen. Gisbergen! Turn four, and he's, this is very costly. Wind, Wind cup is in. And your question is, Will Davison got pace last time around? Craig Lowndes, who's second on the road, was fractionally faster than him. So 135 for Davison and 134.8 for Lowndes. The question for Ford Performance Racing and the Trading Post side is, when does that go too far and they need to bring him in? Well, it's the old undercut, because if Winterbottom is significantly faster on a better tyre, then leaving Davison out will hurt him. So this is now a very strategic battle between the teammates. That's right, so they're now in the window to bring anybody in and get them fueled and get them home. It's whether you choose to and what the impact of that's going to be. And what the tyre dig and the lap splits look like as you look at the different sectors. So they'll be watching Will Davison like a hawk at the moment to see whether or not he's got buffer. And the longer he can run, the younger his tyres are for the back end stint. Look at that, that's for position and that's for the lead effectively. So Bright comes screaming down the front straight and Wincup tucks in behind him on exit of pit lane on cold tyres. Tiptoeing his way around this outlap. We saw some ugly moments on pit exit yesterday. The closing speed is unbelievable. The cars make almost 290 kilometres an hour at the end of this straight. And now Davison in. This will tell where it all sits. So they've decided that they need to get him on better rubber and uh, Lowndes is with him. So he's shadowing the leader, which is the standard procedure when you're in this kind of a battle. So they don't want to run into the point where tyre de degradation hurts them too much relative to those that have grabbed their new tyres and gone. This is fuel to the end, last set of boots. Watching the car, car nine, watching car nine. Okay. Car controller, Oops. until talking, this is Lowndes. It's Van Giersbergen in the background. It's a race between these two outfits. Have a look at the Vodafone car. Got an MPR car, two garages away, just waiting on fuel. You are now clear, you're going to be good to go once you drop here. You're okay. clear, Now Jason Bright is just coming around the final turn. And he's got warm tyres. There he goes. In a hurry. No, that was that was Patrizzi. So where's Bright? So that's a good game for Will Davison. Bright, Here comes coming. Bright. Yeah. There's Winker. Lowndes tucks in behind Jamie Winker. So now Bright's got slightly younger tyres. Uh, correction, uh, Davison's got slightly younger tyres. So it's an interesting little arm wrestle now, this one. So the reason that that's happened is that Bright stayed out and the other guys who come in and pitted early with their safety car have effectively put a, a shorter fill on board. So the five or six seconds is all about the strategy of using the safety car. Intriguing battle at Phillip Island. Stay with us, this will be a cracker.
19 to go, mate. 19 to go. Doing a great job. Welcome back. The safety car has been activated again. Debris on the track. The front right has gone on Fabian Coulthard's entry. And there's big chunks of rubber. He was lucky not to lose the front right-hand panel there, the guard, because it was starting to eat into it. So the uh, safety car is out there, condensing the field. Gives us a chance to take a look at the mother highlights up to this date. Craig Lowndes starts on pole position, stalls it. They go spearing by. David Reynolds got the great jump. In fact, it was a FPR 1, 2, 3 on that opening lap. Look at this. Garth Tander spent more time on the grass than the circuit in the opening couple of laps. Michael Patrizzi started inside the top 10, found the gravel down at the southern loop. And then Mark Winterbottom leads them into pit lane and causes a freight train of trouble. Carl Reindler and Fabian get all locked up. And then Reindler in the thick of it again with Patrizzi down at turn one, maximum speed. That could have been so much worse. We mentioned the fact that David Reynolds just doesn't have the speed. He's currently 10th after starting on the front row. And he's been bashed around a little bit. Jamie Winkup has now pushed his way up into third. Operating on two stops. So the leading pack those doing a one-stop routine are Jason Bright and Lee Holdsworth. That's what I mentioned where Reynolds was the punching bag. Todd Kelly and Lowndes both giving him a whack around the ears. And it's been a costly run for the Bottolo entry. This is Jason Bright into pit lane, express style. Good thing was he could uh, ditch those tyres and get some new ones. So Will Davison after his stop, not having to stay in there longer than the other guys in terms of getting fuel on board allows him to come back out ahead of Bright and take the race lead. So that five seconds matter of less time filling the car because they took the early safety car has given Will Davis on the track position but this safety car now has taken all that away because they're basically filled to the end and a great restart. Good restart there, Will Davis, and look at that. He did a Jason Bright to Jason Bright. <laughs> he did, because he's the first to have that opportunity to actually make the play and make the jump. And this is what we saw in Western Australia. Disaster on Saturday for Davison, and a solid comeback on Sunday. Look at this, Wind Cup looking to make a move quickly on the inside of Bright at one. Right now they know that if they can get a move made, it makes the passage easier for the rest of the race. If you bottle up behind somebody, you're there for a long time. Holdsworth, Van Gisbergen. They're fifth and sixth down to turn four. Lock up from Jason Bright. Look at them. Car four and nine coming together behind them. Mark Winterbottom and John O'Webb are paired off as well. 
they're from the same garage, remember. over Lukey. It's right in the middle of uh, that corner at turn eight there, the hay shed we call it. It's 200 kilometres an hour. This is Tanda. That's for 10th and he gets it done over Reynolds. Lowndes is looking really racy after this restart. He's not letting his teammate go. The same can't be said for uh, Fabian Coulthard. He's looking pretty second hand in that Lockwood Commodore. But uh, look, it's been a cracking race so far. We've got Todd still up in the top ten, which is very good for us. So hopefully we can salvage, salvage a result from that car. But yeah, not where you want to be watching the race, that's for sure. We'll see you in Darwin, mate. Mm, thanks a lot. Oh, Darwin. Yeah, uh, 30 uh, degrees. Wind cup, uh, it, wind cup was under pressure from Lowndes on the run into one then. But then Jamie threw the car so hard at one, it skated out the other side. You could see from the chopper shot, he held position. But he was really under threat there at one moment from his teammate because he's punching the hole in the air, making the passage a little easier for Craig Lowndes. And Wind Cup's actually responded now in the first part of this lap with the fastest sector split we've seen. So Davison's got 0.6 on them here. It's four or five car lengths from Bright. And Mark Dutton's urging, don't let Brighty hold you up too much. I think he's doing everything he can about it at the moment anyway. And a mechanical black flag for Fabian Coulthard in the Lockwood entry for the problems with that front right mudguard we saw earlier that triggered the safety car when that uh, tyre flailed and bits went everywhere and it's also taken the guard as collateral damage. This is the focus, the battle for second at the moment. Wind Cup knows that if he wants to attack Davison, he's got to climb past Jason Bright. Jason Bright by way of response, couldn't care less. He looks for a big result himself. It's been a while since he was first, which is what uh, Bradley was talking about. And this was the reason why Fabian ended up with all this grief. So he's had a failure of a front right tyre. So he's either had contact with somebody or maybe a flat spot and it's fallen to the flat spot and damaged the tyre and popped it. So Davison has about a second buffer, but Bright's under attack from a team Vodafone double and waiting to pounce. Shane Van Gisberg and Lee Holdsworth has moved up the field courtesy of a good strategy run and Mark Winterbottom as well. Don't leave us. This will be a classic finale at the island.
Welcome back. Now, you haven't missed anything race-wise because there's been a safety car out throughout that ad break. There's some debris okay, mate, one down one towards one turn safety, uh, one. Uh, more than likely off Fabian Coulthard's one. car. Fabian's doing his best Philip Island Penguin impersonation. Flappity flap for car 14. And that front guard just um, causing massive headaches for him. Not as big a headache as his race result. He's down there in 24th after both of those guys starting inside the top 10. So safety car has been the story of the day. We're going to get a charge to the end. It is quite a sight, and still no racing action, although this time around there will be. As uh, the safety car has been ordered to peel away into pit lane, we'll have 12 full laps, hopefully 12 clean laps, running to the end. So Will Davison is in the lead. He put a new set of tyres on on lap 25. Jason Bright came in on lap 23. And Jamie Wincup on lap 24. So Will's got the better rubber. Bright, Brighty was a wake up this time. He <laughs> absolutely shadowed him. Yeah. He did not allow him to get any kind of a jump at all. And Wincup, you can echo those remarks. He was right under the rear wing of Bright. Very high quality restart from all of the guys there. You can see that. There's hardly any gaps. And Bright was certainly up to speed with what Will Davison was going to do. He did himself some really very good restarts Ooh, at the start Will. of this race. Very wide for Davison at turn one. And you just never know, when you arrive down there on the first lap like that, tyre temperature's not up, tyre pressure's not up, cars move around, and how much grip you've got, you're a pioneer. So just to underscore the fact they're fueled to the end, there's no strategy play in this, it's a straight dogfight, a sprint race to the end. They've got their fuel, they've got their tyres, they know their track position and it's open warfare. Lowndes had a big look at his teammate Van Gisbergen's using the opportunity to go right round the outside. He might pull off one spot here, he got has. It. Got it. Well done. Lowndes will be grinding paste off those teeth as a result of that. He won't have that big smile on because his speed is probably better than Wing Cup's. And he went down the inside, he decided not to run into his teammate, and Van Gisbergen arrowed down the outside and got it done. So a very good move by Shane. And really, Craig had no choice. If no. he left it open, then Shane would have gone the other side. So oh. really, 
Jacob Lowndes trying to get back. Oh, wheels locked. He had the rear wheels locked, then he was he was going to hit the back three-quarter panel of Van Gisberg, and that would have been a spin for Shane. And the Suns are factored now over the top of Lukey Heights as well. And Lowndes could well get outsmarted by the other Stone Brothers racing car in the picture behind him in Lee Holdsworth. So Will Davison brings it round. Onto the front straight, 290 k's on the approach down to turn one. Doing corner. The thunder of these cars as they go past us on the main straight here makes the hair stand up. Look at the sun into two. Very hard to pick your braking reference down there. It's Davison, half a second, bright, wind cup. Van Gisbergen, who split the team Vodafone cars. Oh, big slide to see that. That was right out sideways. That's given Lowndes the chance to get up the inside. This is very fast. Lowndes noticed, and he has pounced, so he gets it back at turn four. He's going to have to turn in. Van Gisbergen won't give it up. They'll go side by side, out of the hairpin, around the Siberia. One tap, two taps. Lounge is looking for the same thing that he did with Van Gisbergen on the previous lap and gets it done. It's not over because Van Gisbergen tries to stay there. But Lounge has now got clearance, so he needs to be able to make sure he gets into the hay shed without having to move across on the overlap to Shane Van Gisbergen. Very high quality racing between these two guys. They had a great battle here last year. If you remember, they had a drama in the warm up and they served each other up. They had a little running war there for that weekend. And now it's a game the following year on for Young and Old. And Davison is eking a little gap here. A tenth at a time through the sectors. It's out to seven tenths now. Lee Holdsworth and Mark Winterbottom are having a terrific tangle for sixth spot. Holdsworth did a big cover job down towards turn ten. Bright just got a big margin back in the last sector on the race leader. It was 0.7 and he pulled three tenths out in the last sector and you can see it. So he got a great run. Maybe there was even a little mistake from Will in the last corner there. So when you said before about this being now a dogfight to the end, that's absolutely right because this is a sprint race. But remember that the tyres get hurt worse than anywhere in Australia. So as the last four or five laps come about, you'll see different speed and Lowndes has another look at his teammate. Oh. That is so close, you're grip limited, the car's sliding under brakes and he had to turn it in and lucky he didn't make contact with Jamie Winkup. Yeah, I think he's got better speed than Jamie. Oh. Trouble, Premers involved and uh, we've got a fire here. David Walls. David car. Walls is one of Bradley's cars and it's plucked an oil cooler off it. Heading off to the wall there. I hope, they don't, I hope they don't put the safety car out for that because that's not in a dangerous position. That's off the racing line, away from the active side of the road. And let's hope that we can sprint to the end. Lap 35. Brad Jones, you're on the line there, mate. Yeah, I am. I am. Uh, just what, you, can you see anything there? I, yeah, I can see money disappearing at 100 miles an hour. That's what I can see. Very unfortunate for David in the Wilson car. He's done an amazing job this weekend. And... Uh, you know, he's just another innocent victim, really. His uh, car's been turned around, nowhere to go, and it's hit the car pretty hard at the front, I'd say. As you said, it's torn the oil coolers off the car, and that's what the fire's all about. So he's done the right thing. He's got off the road instantly, and uh, hopefully it's in a safe spot and it's not going to affect the racing too much. I just said to the guys, get down to Brighty, let him know that there's a bit of oil on the track coming out of Honda, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can get through that with the BOC car, and... Uh, and, and I'm hoping the race doesn't stop again. Every time there's a restart, there's danger, and uh, I've had about a, as much danger for one day as I can take, so let's hope they don't put the safety car out again. Thanks, mate. He was unfortunate then, wasn't he, Walt? Brad's observation about his pace this weekend, David Wall's been right. He's been going very, very well. So that was no the safety car, which is good news. And you can see the oil there. Oh, Garth Hander. Garth Hander. What's going on there? He just got caught up on the oil on the inside of the circuit. So the leaders came around and stuck to the far left of the circuit, got away from it. But Garth was stuck in the middle of it, massively unsettled the car. And Steve Owen may be a victim here as well. This will relate to what happened a lap earlier. That looks like Siberia. So there's David out of his car. Fortunately, uh, it, we saw it probably pluck the coolers off that car, a little oil fire, and uh, he's been able to 
couldn't get out of it. And there's this. no fire in the year. There's Owen further up the road. And again, it's a long way out of the way. So I don't know that we'll... Yeah, that's wild. Oh, oh, you know what it's like when there's that much oil on the road there. I just wonder how he's going to recover that because that's very crossed up for that particular road. And that's the oil that also got Steve Owen. So the guys will have to very quickly... Every team will be on the radio to their driver to stay to the left, away from the oil. This is Alex Premer, he was the other party involved in that incident down at Turn 4. It's been a tough weekend for the Frenchman. Meantime, second is the margin. One second, Davison to Bright. This battle continues between the team Vodafone cars. Will Davison has won a race here at this circuit. It was in 2009. And he also won Bathurst with Garth Tander. So an enduro win for Will Davison here. Jason Bright, yet to have victory at this place. Jamie Wincup's won here. Craig Lowndes has won eight races at this circuit, so lots to play for at the front of the field. And not only that, that's the big slick. Not only that, Ford have won the last six races of this championship with Davison leading the way. So if Jason Bright can get up there, he'll break that streak for Holden. Ingle and Johnson getting tangled up on the exit of the Honda hairpin. Well, we couldn't see it clearly before. We knew there'd be some oil there, but when we saw that shot, how's the slick? The Exxon Valdez on the exit of turn four is a massive amount of oil. I love how you don't exaggerate. Well, you imagine what it was like up in the car. Imagine what Tanda was thinking when it jumped out from underneath him. <laughs> so it's 0.8 of a second, Davison to Bright. Then Wind Cup and Lowndes. And uh, Lowndes looked racy, but it looks like he's just lost a little bit of touch. There it is from the other angle. How's that? To stick one of those Dunlop slick tyres in there and it's a quick grip disconnect. So Lowndes continues the pressure on his teammate. Will Davison looking for FPR's ninth race win in a season. The most that they've won before is eight in 2008. So very important for FPR to keep this momentum, keep this dominance going. And as Matt said, FPR so far have been the class of 2012. So there's Alex Primer has come out of pit lane and uh, found himself on the wrong side of the Southern Loopers. Lee Holdsworth and John O'Webber side by side down to turn four. This is and for position seven and eight. Webb holds position at this stage. So oil slick on your right, stay to the left. A Davison holding station, it's a one second lead. It's just bought a little bit of time. Winkup and Lowndes look as though they're ready to attack at any time on Jason Bright. Look at that. Look at that margin. Less than a tenth of a second every lap, basically. And this is like doing qualifying laps, lap after lap after lap. This is as fast as you can drive the cars using every bit of tyre life that you've possibly got. And... They're, de they're degrading and their performance is diminishing literally by the second and you can feel it here. It's not like, oh yeah, they're just, we're, we're losing a little bit of adhesion. Look at the run, look at the run. Don't hold him up was the word from Mark Dutton. That'll be a Roland Dane call. And this time he gets through. He has got pace and that's been shown on a couple of occasions. Oh, big slide through one on the exit. So now he can gnaw away on the back of the team BOC car. So Lounce's tyres are two laps right, fresher right. than Jason Bright's. Right so the tyre degradation will be really noticeable now. Here he is again in replay. This, this is only the last part of it. It was actually the run through the final corner that set this up for Craig Lowndes and did it pretty easy with Jamie staying high and wide with a little bit of instruction on the radio to boot. Look at that. Look at that big slide. That's fantastic car control. Over 200 kilometres an hour, right out sideways, gathers it up. And you can see that little margin straight away that Lowndes has got over Wink Cup. That's the little hold-up that he had before. And Jamie's a little vulnerable here to Shane Van Gisbergen. Shane looks like he's got some pace as well. So it's Davison, Bright, Lowndes, Wink Cup, Van Gisbergen. That's the, the top five. Winner bottom yesterday's winner is sixth. He's... Uh... Well, near enough four seconds off the lead of the race, Frosty, and we saw it in the background there. Seems like an eternity, but it's not. Well, he has basically had to fight back since that first pit he stop. He hasn't recovered, has he? So, Will Davison, like you mentioned at WA, had a great run on the Sunday after 
catastrophic Saturday, and he's done it again here today. And not only that, if he holds this lead and wins this race, he'll get the championship lead back. And Jamie Wincup will be one point adrift. So that move on the teammates cost Wincup the championship lead at this stage. A lot of bonnet flutter on the front of Shane Van Gisbergen's car in the draft behind Jamie. <laughs> There'll be more bonnet flutter here if that continues. Yeah, a lot more. He's got him right out sideways. He pushed him right out sideways there. You see Jamie have a look in the mirror. Team, thanks is. for that. That's that flutter that Neil's talking about where the SP sign is. If you have a look at the Ford grill sign and see the movement there. The faster you go, the more buffeting there is. He gets up the inside. He's clearly got pace. Remember there's that oil on the right, so he can't do the crisscross now. This is a great shot. So out of Siberia, they come out of here, second, third, pull fourth gear, and just around this left kink, pull fifth, and look at Blouse right up behind Bright now. That's the gap straight away. He's going to have a look at him over the top here. He'll look to try and sneak down the inside into 10. And he is. And he does. Straight down there. Well done, Jason Bright. Didn't try to fight. He knows that if he got into a fight, that Wink Up and Van Gisbergen would also make him vulnerable. So good job. And yesterday, inadvertently, Lowndes crunched into the back of Bright down at turn four, had him off and copped a penalty. So they're steering clear of each other today. And look, there's no stopping that train at the moment because Lowndes has got pace. That's Jeremy Moore saying, push on hard. This is as good as it gets. This is Craig Lowndes chasing down Will Davison in the closing stages. Was that? that was sideways again. So Lowndes has gone into full qualifying mode here. He's been urged on to try and make a margin. Look at this, Van Gisbergen up the inside. A little touch once again just to unsettle Jamie on the exit. He'll try and have a nibble down the inside here at turn four at the hairpin. He'll try and get in range here. Watch closely. He'll try. He's not quite close enough. He'll think about it. Oh, that's oh, awkward. That's him. awkward. Jamie left a bit of an awkward hole there. He couldn't really cover. So now they're side by side as the run takes them to Siberia. And Van Gisbergen actually had to spend a bit of time on the oil there on exit. He's going to try to hold his ground. He has. He's held his ground very well around Siberia. Puts him on the inside for turn eight and gets it done. Very good driving by both guys. Very good. Great respect. Room given. Lowndes is on the mark oh, here. It's one and a half seconds. Sideways again. So MG. Bright knows he's hurting. He's in damage limitation at the moment. Wants to stay on the podium. Try and recover some points and get a bit of glory for Team BOC. Yeah, I tell you a guy that will have a grin from ear to ear is Peter Wallace, Stone Brothers Racing's engine builder. Shane Van Gisberg's engine has, has been in that car since the start of this year. Nearly five and still honking along. Well done. And at the front, Craig Lowndes has chopped another two tenths of a second out of the lead of Will Davison. So with three laps remaining, the gap at the front is 1.3 seconds. He's, and he's coming. He's, he's making coming. ground. He's absolutely wringing its neck. Here he is again, Lowndes, with a big incentive, a massive carrot in front of him at the moment. It's 1.34. You said he was a legend at the last race meeting by holding the guys off. He'll be a legend today to hold this bloke off because he's coming at him. Well, he's holding off a legend. David Reynolds and Lee Holdsworth at the back end of the top ten. Reynolds now ninth. He had a handful of a weekend, but he's salvaged a top tenner out of this one. 1.1 seconds. He's found two tenths in the last sector, Craig Lowndes. Lounds, look at that, through the hay shed. They are, honestly, as fast as you've ever seen these cars. Across the kerb, sideways, using every little bit of road. Flicks the lights on, says, I am definitely coming, Will. This is the gamesmanship that Lounds plays. He's two tenths faster to the second sector than Will Davison. Davison and Bright are doing about the same lap speed. Van Gisbergen is a fraction slower, but Lowndes is noticeably quicker at the moment, and they're both on the ragged edge of their tyre behaviour in life. Two laps to go, and then your eyes you can get it. 
So having a big go, the margin officially at the control line, 1.19 seconds. 1 minute 34.6 for Will Davison, a 1 minute 34.4 for Craig Lowndes. Bright's hanging on, he's got a bit of fresh air around him at the moment. A podium may be secure. The slightest little mistake now for Will Davison will put Lowndes onto the back of the FPR Falcon. Look at that cluster behind too. There's a big battle going on there behind. It's uh, Van Gisbergen, Winkup, Winterbottom, Webb. Oh, it's a little argument going on back there. Here they are in the background. There's Winterbottom and there's Webb, not too far adrift. So there's a bit to play for here. And that's an angry pack chasing Jason Bright. Yeah, I think he's safe at the moment. And he's that... got about a two second gap, but this one is decreasing. So it's one second, it's flat. Forget about the fact that Craig Lowndes was coming at Will Davison. Craig Lowndes is here and the lights are on. He'll be ruining the fact that he had to give away track position from the minute he picked the clutch up at the start of the race. It's all been hard work since then. Had four safety car interventions to help get it back to a fighting position for Craig Lowndes, but he's going to have to use everything to try and bridge this margin. Jeremy Moore, bottom left of screen. Grant McPherson, top left. And Will is wringing that thing's neck. You could see when he turned it into the final corner, it was sideways. One lap, mate, Jeremy Moore says. 12 corners, four and a half kilometres, three quarters of a second. That's the equation. Turn one, done. These two are going to absolutely wring the necks of their respective cars. Davison's looking for the comeback after a disaster yesterday. In fact, you could say that for both of them. Wasn't a pretty day for Lowndes either. Have a look at how much road they're both using. There's not a skerrick of road left. This is flat out in fifth gear and trying to get the car stopped now for Honda. Lowndes right up behind him now. Point six. Is there a passing opportunity from out here? The only one that if, I mean, if Will was to make any sort of a blue, then Craig will look at him at the inside of MG, turn That's 10, right. but I don't think he's close enough. But it's been a huge effort from Lowndes. And a huge effort from this bloke who's responded very well to the charging Craig Lowndes. And from yesterday's disaster with a bucket of bolts as he drove out of the circuit last night to a race winning position now late on Sunday. So the trading post Falcon will keep this run of the Blue Oval boys going. Craig Lowndes threw everything at him in those dying laps. But yet again, Will Davison has shown that he can hold off the very best. And at Phillip Island, will take his sixth race win of the season. Point 0.5 of a second, the difference. Jason Bright holds down third. And Shane Van Gisbergen and Jamie Winkup make up the top five. Lowndes probably spent a little bit too much time behind his teammate. Celebration for Ford Performance Racing. All the management, the engineers, the crew down there. I went and asked Grant McPherson yesterday, every time we hear these interviews with Will, he talks about shippy. I said, what's the shippy thing all about? He said, oh, well, they call me a shipwreck. And it's a long story as to why he's the shipwreck, but he's engineer shippy, that's what it's about. So here we go, Will Davison in celebration down on the dirt and the muck down there. Not only is he gonna celebrate his first solo race win at this circuit, but he's got the championship lead back. <laughs> On board. He was down there yesterday, but in rather different circumstances. <laughs> and a little bit different to when he did some circle work in uh, WA with no rubber. He's got a bit more left under there. Tim Edwards is getting used to the celebrations. And that was his dad, Richard. And here's the unofficial results for you. Half a second was the gap. Will Davis and Craig Lowndes. Jason Bright, great job. A podium for the boys at Team BOC. That'll put a smile on their faces. Shane Van Gisbergen and Jamie Wintcup. Mark Winterbottom recovering from having to queue in the pit lane. Then Webb Reynolds, who had no pace by comparison to what we saw yesterday, Holdsworth and Tander.
James Courtney started in 23rd, so he made up 10 spots after starting from pit lane, remember? Or, in fact, he started at the back of the field, so Russell Ingle as well managed to motor through the field. A half gamble that paid off. And Steve Owen there, the last of the finishers. So Alex Premer, Carl Ryan, LaFabian Coulthard, Patrizzi Wall, Kelly D'Alberto, all victims of the Phillip Island circuit. So that crucial second trip to pit lane... Where he didn't have to and wait as long for the fuel. <laughs> 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 it's yeah. full of smoke, it's and the rear tyres are absolutely shot. <laughs> <laughs> thumping and banging in the back of that thing. Listen to him. <laughs> so, what a moment when he comes out of pit lane after that second stop and joins the race circuit proper ahead of Jason Bright at that stage and finds himself in a stellar battle with Craig Lowndes over the last five laps. And there's Jamie Winkup. So fifth after starting from sixth in his 250th championship race. He hands the championship lead back to his buddy by 10 points. Mark Winterbottom there and Craig Lowndes goes back up to fourth. So Tim Slade holding down a, a top 10 as well. And Fabian Coulthard, who um, got pounded today, 450 points adrift after the 11th race of the championship. You know, at the very top, Jamie Winkup said in our opener to this show, I just don't know how we're going to keep this going until December. They're all blown away themselves by the level of intensity and the pure skill factor involved in this racing. Well, they keep delivering time and time again, weekend and weekend, and race after race. You get the feeling it will go all the way to December. Hey, Craig Lowndes, that was one of the comebacks of all time. From that start to finish second was amazing. Well done. Yeah, thanks, Brett. I've got to stop doing those Mark Scaife starts. I was just actually talking to our boys before the start. I haven't actually started here for a long time. It was a 500. Scaife used to start, so I might have to get him back in the car. But, it's uh, look, it was a hell of a day for us at Team Vodafone because, you know, we had a, such a disappointing race yesterday. Um, they kept bounce back. to have pole position and then have to bounce back again after my bad start, which is obviously an area we need to work on. Did you think you were getting close to getting Will? Uh, look, if we had another probably 10 laps, I think, I would have maybe have had a chance, but uh, you know he was keeping that gap pretty uh, constant, and it was something that I was pushing hard. But obviously he had a little bit more in reserve than I thought. He only needed one little slip, but he didn't make it, mate. No, no. Unfortunately, it's uh, when you try and put pressure on you. Hopefully that they'll trip up, but uh, they didn't. But uh, you know, credit to FPR, they're obviously a strong team this year. And uh, as I said, thankfully to our guys, we've uh, we've bounced back from a bad day yesterday. And uh, you know, we'll see what Darwin brings. But uh, just quickly, hello to uh, Chile and Levi. Chile's birthday yesterday. Hope hope you had a great day. Good on you, Dad. Well done. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Brett. All right, Jason Bright. Boy, what a fight, Brighty. You're stuck in there. You're hung in there. We can see the tyres going off, but great effort to get on the podium. Oh, really happy. I mean, you know, obviously these guys stopped a bit later than us and, and they probably had greens. We used all our greens yesterday because we sort of put our best foot forward and, um, you know, so we didn't have as good tyre today, but really happy with the pace of the car. I mean, you know, to, to hang hang on to these guys, you know, have been the front runners all year. Um, you know, probably when we didn't have our best tyres and, and when they stopped later, I'm, you know, extremely happy. It shows, shows we're on a good thing at the moment. Great to see you back on the podium, Brighty. Well done. Mate, it's good to be back. And Will Davis, and what a result, boy. Had Craig Lowndes breathing down his neck and just enjoying the moment here, Will. Congratulations. That was pressure racing. <laughs> that was, um, you know, all those safety cars, guys trying to do one-stoppers. Uh, long stints around here aren't easy, Brett. Uh, you know, the tyres go away and high-speed corners, <laughs> lots of sliding, and obviously Lowndes, was coming strong. When I saw him, got through, uh, saw him get through Brighty, uh, I was pretty nervous. And uh, just an amazing day after yesterday. Um, I was down last night. I didn't enjoy that day yesterday. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really stoked for this one today. I reckon you'll enjoy the podium. We'll get up there and have a good time. Oh, well, I've got my beautiful grandma here today as well, and she's not that well, and it's amazing to have her here. And uh, hi to everyone at home as well. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you. Cheers. Here with Shane Van Gisbergen, mate, watching those last few laps, that your racing you're doing with Jamie Winkup, tell me, forget all the appearances and corporate stuff you have to do, that's what this game is about, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. It was hard racing, good racing. Jamie was fair, and when I passed him, I sort of got halfway alongside, but not enough so he could see my um, bonnet at his door, and I realised he didn't have a right side mirror, so he just turned in, probably didn't know I was there, but uh, great racing side by side, gave each other enough room, and it was pretty cool. Didn't quite have the car to challenge for the win like we did yesterday, but uh, yeah, pretty good weekend for us.
Yeah, well, you're absolutely a championship contender, mate. It's still early days, and uh, the car is quick. As we've talked about, but you make, you're maturing, you're making, you're not making mistakes. I mean, you must be really pleased the way it's going, particularly when you're racing someone like Jamie and getting by him like that. It's smart stuff. Yeah, definitely. It's great racing those guys, and had a good battle with Craig. I got him round the outside of the hairpin, and he got me back quite nicely later on. So it's it's good to be racing this with those guys. They do have a little bit of an edge on us at each track, but you know we need to be more consistent at bridging that gap. But certainly enjoying myself and. Uh, Happy with Stone Brothers. We've signed another three-year deal, Fantastic. so uh, great way to kick it off. Well and truly in the hunt. Well done, mate. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, it has been a good weekend to celebrate that new contract on the podium yesterday and just outside of it today. And well and truly in the championship picture. He's only 260-odd points adrift with a long way to go in 2012. The podium is all lit up here at the island. Phillip Island 300 podium presentation for race 11 of the year. And would you please congratulate our winner in first place for Ford Performance Racing, Will Davison. In second place for Team Vodafone, Craig Lowndes. And in third place for Team BOC, Jason Bright. Representing the winning team, Ford Performance Racing, is Matt Roberts. Making the presentation of the third place trophy is Fergus Cameron, the managing director, Phillip Island Grand Prix Circuit. Presenting to second place is Daryl Holt, the national channel manager for Beam Global New Zealand. Making the presentation to the winning team is Andrew Clifford, the trade marketing manager, tradingpost.com.au. And presenting to our first place getter is Andrew Caldwell, General Manager Sales, Telstra Advertising Network. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 V8 Supercars, Phillip Island 300 Race 11 winners. The sixth time this year, Will Davison has had that view. And after that collision with Jamie Wincup yesterday, he was hurting. Make no mistake about that. So the smile's back on his face. He's got the championship lead back. Oh. <laughs> Get in here.